Welcome to Jason Whiskey Wise. My name is Jason. Welcome today to this whiskey review where we're going to be reviewing the Laphroaig PX cask. So this is an expression from Laphroaig, part of their travel retail range. And in the last video, we reviewed the QA cask. And if you have missed any of the videos, I'll leave a link to the playlist up here. So it's part of the travel retail range. You've got the QA, the PX, the Anquan Moore. Now you've got the Four Oak and also the 1815 Legacy Edition. And together, this comprises the travel retail range. However, as well, uh, I did hear that the PX, the Anquan Moore, and also the QA are going to be phased out as they keep the Four Oak and also the Legacy in travel retail, which I think is kind of sad because I've heard lots of good things and we're going to find out about it today. So, PX. It is a no-age statement whiskey. It's bottled at 48%. It's got a very inviting nose. The actual cast selection on this one are American oak casks. Then you've also got quarter casks. And you've also got PX casks. And it's, so it's basically a triple matured whiskey uh, in terms of maturation. The actual distillery itself is the Lafroy Distillery. They are owned by the parent company, Beam Centauri. And they are located on Isla Scotland. Now the price point on a full size bottle is around about £60 here in the UK and I have seen it as well around about £55 so it's like a £5 price difference. You can find it cheaper by all means that's a really good price um, but in terms of exclusivity it is travel retail exclusive. I've not actually seen that in any of the shops in London so I would say it's completely travel retail exclusive. So without further ado, let's get into the nose of this whiskey. Into the nose. To begin things out now on the nose for the PX car, straight away I'm getting that whiff of smoke, but it's a very gentle smoke. To me it's almost like smoked kippers. Um, it's something you get here in the shops here in the UK. It's like a smoked fish, and then you're going into this almost like a, a fruity aspect. It's almost like you've got a combination of dark cherries, and I was thinking it's a bit sweeter, but it's a bit more richer and darker. There is a sort of leathery aspect about it, and then you've got this citrus holding itself very firm on the nose. It's almost like a grapefruit zest that's quite powerful, but at the same time giving off this citrus burst. And then you get this medicinal, that classic Laphroaig style with that medicinal peaty character. A little bit of tar on this one, and a soft bit of burnt rubber that just works its way just gently in around this one, but it's holding off much more compared to the QA, where it is much more easily detected. This one is more softer. That's about it for the nose. Let's get into the palate. Slanja. Wow. Getting things started off now on the Laphroaig PX. Straight away, arrival on the palate. It's got a very nice texture about it. It's not very viscous, but at the same time, it's not as light as the QA. This has got a nice body about it. It's almost oily in the texture. First thing I get is that not really an peaty character, but it's almost like a burnt rubber, like a burnt black rubber, giving a very different character about it. And then you've got these notes of coming through this sort of, almost for me, I'm saying it's like sweet tobacco. And then you get a little bit of red licorice, giving a sweetness, but a slight bitter character. That sounds weird. Um, but now from that, straight away, as you take a breathe in, you're getting these very spicy, mouth-warming characters, red cloves, a bit of cinnamon sticks, a bit of candy ginger. I'd say probably even ginger biscuits, because um, it does have a soft sweetness right on the back end. I still get that cherry note, which I got in the beginning, and it's now still on the palate. And there is a bit of dried fruits on this one, but instead of picking them up sort of individually, it's like a combination of them. And then it finishes off on this one with a little bit of a plummy character. And it sort of makes you want to keep going back for a second sip. So I can see why a lot of people like this one. So let's go for our final sip and then we'll come to the conclusion and the two tasting notes on the finish. So overall opinions on the Laphroaig PX. I'm going to pop this down. The overall finish on this whiskey has got a very nice combination of flavors. It's got, I'd say, a medium finish, maybe a medium full finish. These smoky characters sort of fade off and you're left with this almost like a charred oak character with almost like a backlash of spice coming through, just giving you that extra heat and warmth coming off. And then you get a little bit of these red berries, red fruits, so to speak, on the finish of the whiskey. And it's not very long, but at the same time, it's not short. So it's, I say, a medium, maybe medium full. Overall opinions, though. Now, my opinion on this one, 
I'm going to give this one here first a rating and I'll explain it. I'm giving it an 88 out of 100. So the Lafroy PX cast. My reason I'm giving it that rating is the integration between the actual PX and the Pete of Lafroy combined together seem to be very well interlocked. And I think that's something that Lafroy have mastered in this one. You're not getting overpowering flavors from the PX over making it over sweet, over sherry, over fruity. But at the same time, you're not getting over peat and you're not getting that really earthy character coming through. And neither is it briny, which I really am grateful it's not too salty. So I think this is very well integrated. It's, it's one of those whiskeys I'd say is up there from Lafroy. Um, the one thing I would say is the actual aspect of the nose. Now, I would highly recommend if you've got this bottle, maybe you're planning to buy this bottle, pick it up, and when you do, sit with this one on the nose and let it have some time to breathe in the glass. Let it oxidize, because those PX characters almost feel masked within the first maybe few minutes of just sitting there with a the bottle of whiskey in your glass. Give it time, let it breathe, and let it reveal these flavors. Otherwise, it doesn't seem to do any justice. That's my opinion. So, I feel that, well, the PX and the uh, P are very well integrated in this one. Does it offer depth and complexity? It does. There's a lot of combination of flavors, and they're just waiting to be discovered, and I think that's something very enjoyable. So I would highly suggest, you know, I would say if this was value for money, 60 pounds, get it. Uh, if you get the opportunity, if you're flying through an airport, if you're a Lafroy or you're a Pete fan, or maybe you want a sweeter Pete, this is something very nice. But I wouldn't pay any more than maybe 65 to 70 pounds top for this one. I just feel that's kind of pushing the envelope and just saying it's asking for too much. So 60 pounds, I'd say perfect value for money. If you can get it cheaper, it's a steal. And in terms of does it need time? Yes, like I mentioned, does need time because of the nose. However, the palette also as well, it probably be a bit too spicy if you don't give it that time. So 88 out of 100, I'm going to stop rambling on. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. Drop it a thumbs up if you did, as it'll greatly help us on the channel. Uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button, and also be sure to check out some other Lafroy videos. I'll leave them on the screen. But this has been me, Jason Whiskey Wise, Mr. Bananas, and we'll catch you all for the next video. Slanja.